afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here with us. This is the first activity for the Hispanic Latino Heritage Month here at Bristol Community College. And we are very excited uh, about the activities that we have planned. You will be getting some more emails this month. Um, and in these activities, perhaps the most important of the month, because we're going to present an award to a person who has been a great contributor to the Latino community here in the surrounding areas that Bristol serves. And that person this uh, year is Dr. Guillermo Gonzalez. Um, so please welcome President Brega. He's going to present the award. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you and welcome everyone. Good morning and uh, uh, good afternoon. And we're very, uh, very proud to celebrate our diversity at Bristol Community College. Uh, what I always say for whether it's African American History Month or Women's History Month or whatever it is, uh, we don't want to be confined to just one calendar uh, period uh, in the year. We want to celebrate our diversity across the year, uh, uh, 365 days a year. And uh, we're so blessed that, uh, at uh, Bristol Community College to have uh, such a, a wealth of diversity at the college and uh, uh, it makes us all the stronger. Uh, we bring all these different perspectives into our classroom discussions and our campus life, and it makes it all worthwhile for us. And uh, you know, I'm very excited. I want to thank the committee uh, for its great work uh, in, uh, as always, in uh, organizing these various events. Um, and it's my honor uh, this uh, today to uh, present uh, the uh, winner, uh, this year's winner, and the recipient of the Hispanic Heritage Award. Uh, uh, the, from the uh, from the college, and uh, Dr. Guillermo Gonzalez, uh, we're very proud to have you with us, and uh, Mrs. Gonzalez is here as well. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez was a, is is a native of Puerto Rico, uh, currently resides in New Bedford, um, and with over 30 years of uh, experience as a psychiatrist, and he has a private practice in New Bedford uh, at this point. He serves on the education committee of the. Uh, uh, New Bed City of New Bedford education plan and has worked with the mayor at his invitation on the Latino Advisory Committee as well. Uh, he brings a rich uh, uh, experience to us uh, and to his work in New Bedford. Uh, we, uh, he's going to start a charter school, be, be involved with a charter school that's starting this fall uh, and is uh, uh, K through eight, a, a wonderful name, Soul of the Sea. Uh, it's really a Spanish name, but that's the translation, and that's the, I'm sticking to the English part. <laughs> um, Alma Del Mar, Alma Del Mar. Um, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, his work for the uh, Disability de uh, Determination Consultant for the Social Security Administration and the Welfare Department, and you know, the, uh, his service to the community with the mayor and with the various committees that he's been on, and this kind of work, all uh, uh, profit from his uh, involvement and his expertise. Um, he's a member of the Greater New Bedford Community Health Foundation uh, Board of Directors as well. So you can see that there's a rich uh, 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 and a broad spectrum of experience uh, that Dr. Gonzalez brings to us and brings to uh, his work in the community. His, uh, his love for community service uh, stands out and is really in uh, in a large part uh, why he was selected for our, uh, for our award. So at this point, um, uh, Tee, should I uh, present the award, if that's okay? Thank you. Are you receiving it? No? no okay. Uh, this award uh, will be uh, for the uh, Hispanic Heritage Award. It's from the, uh, from the Bristol Community College uh, uh, community, our BCC family. And uh, Dr. Gonzalez, I'd like to welcome you to our BCC family now, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. May I present that to you? Please. First of all, I want to thank you for the award and being selected. Uh, thank you, Thais, and uh, thank you to the president. It is really commendable that our institutions of higher education uh, celebrate the Hispanic heritage because America was also uh, colonized by Spaniards and we have a strong uh, heritage in, in Spain and Hispanics are uh, part of the largest uh, minority and the fastest growing minority 
nationally, and in particular in, in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, Hispanics are well represented in uh, elementary, secondary uh, institutions uh, of education, but not as much in higher education. Uh, so I think that activities like this could uh, encourage more Hispanics to attain uh, college education. Uh, we are number 16 in the world in terms of population with college degrees or more. Uh, it is sad to say, but our graduation rates are really uh, not the best. Uh, aware of this situation, uh, President Obama promised that by uh, the year 2020, we are going to be number one in the world in terms of college graduation. Uh, I think that's a commendable goal. Uh, and I, my, 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 uh, what I'm going to say today uh, is based on my personal and professional experience. And I basically title it, and I put it in writing so that, you know, if anybody got to sleep, well, and then wants to refresh it, it's going to be, and they'll have copies. Uh, it, uh, I want to start by telling you a short story that pertains to this Hispanic and, and by culture. So one Sunday, there's this mouse in one of many alleys in the Bronx, New York, and he's taking a stroll with his mouse son. And while walking, all of a sudden, a cat jumped in front of the, the small mouse and opened the mouth and it's going to eat it in one stroke. The father behind starts barking and out loud barking the cat with fears in his eyes run away. So after they compose, the father mouse tells the son, Listen, son, in this world, in this new world, being bilingual is a matter of life and death. <laughs> I, I designed the ABC of uh, having success in college education. So, the ABC goes this way. Number one, or A, we have to remind that no matter how many titles we have, we're animals. And that's our nature. We are not plants, we are not mineral, we are animals. So like animals, most of our behavior is uh, control or driven by impulses, biological impulses. Most of them we are not aware because uh, they, although they are the determinants of our behavior, we are not aware of them. One of those uh, natural instincts, uh, it's better understood uh, if we see the history and we, we look for anthropology and ethology, which is the study of behavior uh, compared to animals. One of the basic instincts that uh, animals, like us, face when forming groups, social groups, is the conflict with authority. Uh, it's like the Lion King, if you have seen it, is the challenge of the authority and trying to become the alpha male. Uh, if we see the, from, from the anthropology, we see that the Cro-Magnon men uh, was very much an aggressive 
individual. The, he the, it did not survive. The, the, the Neanderthal man, who was more humanistic and was in show more care for the fellow people and fellow people in community, they, they were the ones that uh, first started burying their loved ones. Uh, the nether men uh, survived and the Cromagnon did not. So the first obstacle that any student uh, faces when entering uh, the educational process is this issue about authority. Okay. You, authority against the teachers, authority, you want to establish yourself against the, the, the be the alpha male in, in that sense, or be the authority. If we don't, if we're not aware of our nature and our instincts, our instincts control, control our behavior. Instead, we can have a rational view to our instincts, and then we can control the instincts. So when the student starts the process, the first issue that they have to deal is this conflict with the authority. The authority that is being represented by the teachers, and the rational way to deal with this conflict of authority is for the student to realize that the teacher is the messenger of the experience accumulated by many individuals, and it's presented and condensed to us and presented in a way that we don't commit uh, the mistakes that have been committed to uh, previous individuals. Uh, that's the way to approach uh, the classroom. Uh, the, we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time we start a course. You know, we can use that knowledge with, you know, first of all, controlling the natural tendency as uh, not to listen and fight and demean the other students and, and the teachers. So the first step to really have success in, in the educational process and be able to complete college is overcoming with this, dealing with this conflict of authority issue. B, our culture does not, in, 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 in the contrary, the oriental culture sees see things and realities like the gene and gen. No. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, the gene and gen are not opposite forces, are complementary forces. We, we are animals, and as animals, we die. And, and, and death, in this culture, we don't see, we don't have death as the thoughts of daily life, and we don't see life in, in terms of death. Uh, and, and, and I think this is, this is very significant and very important, and I, I just want to uh, mention to you uh, that these ideas, I, I'm taking it uh, from a book uh, written by a psychiatrist, uh, Victor Frankel, and he's a, he was a Jewish uh, psychiatrist. And in, in his book, In Search for Meanings, uh, he described his experiences in the concentration camp that he was uh, uh, placed uh, during uh, the war. Uh, as a psychiatrist, uh, you know, we like talking and we like, you know, f talking to people about their lives, so he couldn't stop doing that while in the concentration camp. The, the work, the system work there was that they placed them in barracks, and there was one that was called the gray barrack. The gray barrack was nothing else but the gas chamber. 
there they were slaughtered like in groups. Uh, so they keep moving them from one barrack to the other until they were placed in the, in the gray barrack and they were gone. So he spent his time talking to people as they approach the gray barrack. And what is that people think? You know, he asks himself, if you are approaching death, what's going to be in your mind? He was a psychoanalyst, and the psychoanalyst idea is that when you approach death, and he postulated like a psychoanalyst, that you are going to be having more of what we call psychoanalysts mostly call primary thought processes. Primary thought processes are thoughts that come from our instincts. It's, it's the instinctual uh, thoughts. It's uh, sex, anything that it's a drive or a need, biological need. So the, he postulated that, well, what's going to happen is that as they faced it, it's what I'm going to be seeing in more and more primary thought process. To his surprise, that was not exactly what happened. It was something completely different to him that he did not anticipate. What he found was that people, as they approach death, thinks about their life, thinks about their spouses, their, their partners, their children, their parents, their work, their work achievements, things that gave meanings to, to life. And that is my second advice for college. When you think about college, you need to think about death. You need to think that you want uh, College is the major source of meanings besides human relations. And you need to have, you have to design your education based on meanings, based on goals, based on how is that you want to transform your life. If you die like we're going to die, how is that you want to be remembered like? How is that you want to remember yourself at that moment? And the way to deal with education is by doing something that is meaningful to you. The third and, and last advice is that we're animals, but we have a brain. And we need to, to know and learn how is that the brain works. The brain, you have to think about the, the, for those coming now, they, there's going to be a copy, and you don't miss anything, you know, it's going to be a copy. You take a photocopy and you'll get it all, including the joke. Uh, <laughs> so the brain, the way the brain works is that what it does is the, the brain process information, okay? That's what it does. It processes external information and it processes internal information. So it tells us, it provides us the information in, 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 so that we edit and we decide what is that we're gonna do. So that's basically what the brain does, you know. Uh, Processing information, in both internal and external. And then, based on that information, we behave, and we do things like we do, uh, like studying or not studying or whatever. Uh, there are two basic styles of uh, processing information by the brain, and we describe them as field dependence and feel independence. And there are many, many, many tests that you could 
uh, administered to somebody and you can uh, decide uh, or you can figure out which is the mode that that brain process information. Um, I'm gonna give you an example uh, of one of the, the, the ways that we, uh, so we, we write uh, different colors in, in some place and we present it to the individual. We write blue. But we write blue, but it's painted in red. So we write red, but it's painted in yellow. So you present it to them and you time it. They have, and so what's the color there? And we time in the responses, you know. Field dependent individuals tend to commit more mistakes. Field independent individuals they don't commit the mistakes. So, so those, those two basic styles of how the brain process information leads to two personality styles. One personality style that we call it internal locus of control, and the other one that we call external locus of control. So the, the internal lock of, of control individual do things based on their love, their needs, their values, and their priorities. The external locus of control individual do things mostly based on the needs, the drive, the values, and the priorities of other individuals. So, my third advice, if you want to finish your college education and be successful, is that you need to promote your internal locus of control. We know that you learn what you love, what you like. It's difficult to learn, and the learning process is facilitated when you do things based on your desires and not somebody sells desires. That's a simple rule. And, but we not always follow that rule. We need to feel in the educational process that we are the authors, that we are the main responsible for our education, and we are the, the ones that pick whatever we pick uh, and take the responsibility of doing it and also take the blame but take the glory. But it should come from inside and should not come from the outside. I just want to also say that in, in these days in which we have an economy which is global, which is being described as the intelligence uh, economy, it is fundamental to have an excellent education. An excellent education is, will not only assure you lots of emotions and positive things, will help you and facilitate you get a good job. Okay, will also facilitate you to stay away from a life full of crime. Most important, an excellent education is the key of our own happiness. Thank you very much. Well, that was uh, quite enlightening and a, a wonderful presentation that uh, speaks well for our community college mission, doesn't it? And uh, it's just what we're about. And we ought to increase the levels of education, attainment, and the levels of literacy in our region. And uh, uh, you've given us some much food for thought here, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you very much. I'd like to, uh, again, thank the uh, 
Hispanic uh, committee uh, that arranged this. I think we uh, we have a series of events planned for the for the month, and I'm sure you'll be hearing more and more about them as the schedule unfolds. In the meantime, uh, we have some wonderful uh, food and refreshments. Uh, I hope you'll take the time to stay and maybe exchange ideas with uh, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Uh, Gonzalez. Thank you very much for coming. Tahis, did you want to say uh, anything about the committee? Hello, everyone. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you, Guillermo, for accepting this invitation. Thank you, President Jack. Um, so the Hispanic History Month Committee have activities every month. So we have a full calendar for this year. So we're going to send email to everyone with the activities. Uh, maybe we're going to have some Mesa Redonda that is like um, a Spanish speaking. You know, you can try to speak some Spanish or something like that. Uh, I will let you know. And thank you so much for everyone here. And we have some arroz con pollo, maybe, something. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we look forward to even more events as well. And congratulations again to Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you.